Namaste, welcome yogis. My name is Cassandra, and today I'm going to take you through a yin yoga practice for sexual health and vitality. This is wonderful to help restore your libido and sex drive, and we're really going to focus on the kidney meridian. So make sure you have a block somewhere close by and begin in a reclined butterfly pose. So laying on your back, bring the soles of your feet together to touch and let your knees drop open to the sides. Working through the hips, the pelvis, the low back. You might choose to take yoni mudra as well, so just a hand placement to really connect to the womb, to the pelvis, uh, and to the sexual organs. All you're doing is bringing your thumbs together and index fingers together and just letting your palms rest towards the lower belly. So the thumbs might be a little bit below the navel and the index fingers go towards the pubic bone. And as you relax in this pose, find a comfortable rhythm with your breath, inhaling and exhaling through your nose, and see if you can send your breath all the way down into your low belly and low back, right underneath your palms. With the help of our breath, we want to cultivate vitality. So can you send energy and awareness down into the sexual organs, down into your hips, down into your legs. Really infusing those areas of your body with your breath. Release any tension from your shoulders, your neck, your jaw. These poses are meant to physically release tension from the hips, the low back, the pelvis. But we're also trying to tap in energetically by moving chi or prana throughout the body, releasing any blockages that might be holding back your full sexual health and your libido. And we also want to connect emotionally. So notice for you the stories that might come up around your sexuality, what you tell yourself, the judgments that might arise. This class is an opportunity for you to adopt a new mindset a new perspective, opening yourself up to healing, opening yourself up to a new relationship with your sexuality.
And let's come out of this pose. You can help your knees lift back up to center and grab a hold of your block. We're gonna take a variation of supported bridge. So you can lift your hips up and put the block underneath you at its lowest level. We'll take knee to chest, so pull your right knee in towards your belly and straighten your left leg out in front of you. So you should feel this quite a bit through the front of your left thigh into the hip flexors and maybe a little bit through the inner groin. Stretching through the inner right thigh, only using a little bit of arm strength to try to roll your shoulders down and away from your ears and let yourself be really heavy here. You might need to hold on to the back of the thigh if the front of the shin is not accessible at the moment. Just finding your edge, what is appropriate for you at this time. And as you hold this pose, you might begin to ask yourself, what is a negative belief, behavior, or attitude that you'd like to let go of as it relates to your sexuality and sensuality? And as we let go of the old, of what no longer serves us, we make room for something new. So what are you trying to call in? What do you want more of? let's slowly release so the left knee this time will come in towards the chest and you can straighten your right leg out in front of you see if you can keep your right heel grounded as you pull the left knee a little bit closer towards your belly and just remind your shoulders again to release no tension in the upper body pay attention to the rhythm of your breath soft and steady in and out through your nose
And let's release this variation of our supported bridge pose. And we're gonna come into a wide like a child's pose. So you can lift your hips off the block and move it off to the side. And however you need to get up, maybe just rolling to one side, pushing your palms into the floor to lift up. Wide like a child's pose, bring your big toes together and widen your knees as wide as you can without causing any kind of pain or pinching in your lower back. So you do want to be able to hold this pose for a few minutes without tensing up, without struggling and resisting, without holding your breath. So you do want to find some kind of comfort here in this shape. You might extend your arms out and just melt the heart, melt the chest down to the ground. The kidney meridian also travels up through the spine, through the front of our heart and our chest. So feel this space release as you press your hips back towards your heels and invite that space through the inner groin and inner thighs to release. So physically releasing tension so that we can more easily release emotional or energetic tension as well.
begin to walk your palms in nice and slow, lifting out of this wide like a child's pose. Getting ourselves into swan pose next, or what we call pigeon pose in Hatha yoga traditions. So you can bring your right knee somewhere behind your right wrist and you can extend your left leg further back. And now you might want to put your block underneath your right hip if you're quite high off from the floor. Otherwise, just square off the weight so you're not leaning on one side more than the other and initiate the fold once you feel good here. The block can go under your chest or forehead as well if that's comfortable. But we want the hips to be leveled and the shoulders to be squared. And your arms might work a little bit here to hold you in the pose, but we don't want our arms to be struggling or pushing against the floor. As much as possible, let gravity do the work for you here. This is an intense hip opener. And many teachers believe that emotions are stored in the hips. And I don't particularly believe that one area of the body holds more than another, but I certainly do believe that emotions can be stored in our body as a whole. And in my experience, the more intense the yoga pose is, the more it triggers me and might bring up some emotions. So just notice if that happens for you. This is a practice for sexual health and vitality, for your sex drive overall, and to cultivate a deeper relationship with your own sensuality. So notice what comes up for you and see what kind of energy you'd like to bring in.
And let's come out of swan pose, lifting back up. It might just feel good to stretch your right leg back behind you here, get the blood flowing again down through that right hip. And whenever you're ready, you can find the same thing, same pose on the other side. Left knee somewhere behind your left wrist. Square off the hips and maybe stretch your right leg further back to facilitate this. And come into the fold whenever it feels appropriate to you. It's very normal for one side to be a lot more intense than the other. So just make sure you have your props close by and that you're using them when you need them. Settle into the pose. Find some stillness in your body. And try to fully release.
And let's lift out of the swan pose. And again, it might feel good just to stretch your left leg back a little bit or move. And our next asana is probably one of the most intense ones that we have in yin. It's called frog pose. If you think it's going to be too much for you today, you're welcome to just take a wide like a child's pose again. Otherwise, I'm just going to turn to face towards you. So you want to widen your knees as much as you can. And instead of reaching your hips towards your heels, try to keep your hips in the same line with your knees and get your ankles and your feet to be in line with your knees. So your knees are bent at around a 90 degree angle everything staying in line and then you can fold forward and unless you're very flexible and going down to the mat you'll probably want to have your block somewhere close by to either put under your chest or under the forehead or you might actually just stay up onto your palms or onto your forearms if the hips are a little bit tighter so this is definitely an intense one that really targets that kidney meridian and uh, that helps to facilitate really that um, sexual health and vitality that we're trying to bring back into our bodies. So find as much comfort in this pose as possible. Minimize the tension in your upper back, in your shoulders, in your neck, and really focus on your breath here. Your breath is your greatest ally, especially when a pose is challenging like this one. And go really slowly to come out of this one. Walk the palms in, walk the knees in. And we're going to lay down on our backs, easing things down a little bit, setting ourselves up for half happy baby pose. So with your feet flat on the mat and your knees bent, you can draw your right knee towards your right shoulder and you might just hang out here 
or you can hold on to the big toe or the sole of your right foot as you align your right ankle directly over the top of your knee. And you can use your elbow to just push that knee open a little bit wider as you at the same time try to drag that right knee down towards the floor. Keep your left hip pressing into the mat so that you're not rolling over onto one side. You might just kind of let your left knee flop over to the side a little bit to provide more of a counterweight. Relax your belly fully. Before going to the other side, let's transition to a laying spinal twist. So you can guide your right thigh to wrap around the left, and you might need to move your hips a little bit over to the right side before letting both knees drop down over to your left. You can extend out long with your arms, both shoulder blades grounding on the floor, chest faces up. Just a nice twist for your low back. Maybe close your eyes.
and lift the knees back to center, uncross the legs. Let's find half happy baby on the second side. Draw your left knee in, maybe hold on to the foot as you stack your ankle over your knee. Keep your arm to the inside of that leg to press it open a little wider and just let your right knee naturally drop open to the side. Find your length, spinal twist. Guide that left thigh across and over the top of your right thigh. You might need to move your hips to the left so that it's a bit easier to let both knees drop down to the right. Really emphasize your left shoulder grounding and rolling back so your chest is facing up and this is really a twist from your mid to low back.
Engage your belly to lift your knees back up to center. And before we come into Shavasana, we'll take one last pose. Grab a hold of your block. Let's make our way into supported bridge. So you might choose to have your block a little higher this time, maybe on the second level. And you can keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the mat. Relax your arms and your upper body. Just a mild inversion. I find these really therapeutic, especially when we're working with these themes of libido. So letting the blood flow move from the pelvis down into the heart. Letting your lower body be just a little bit higher than the upper body. And one last time, really check in with yourself and see what it is that you want to let go of. And what do you want to come in and take its place? What new behavior or attitude or perspective would help you find a deeper connection to your own sexuality? Let's close our practice coming into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Move the block off to the side, and you can do any little movements or adjustments here that feel good for your low back and for your hips. And then take up lots of space as you stretch out your legs and your arms, turn your palms to face up to the sky, and really take the time to get comfortable here so that you can enjoy these few minutes 
of rest and relaxation, giving yourself the opportunity to integrate all of the work you've done. It's very similar to digesting after a big meal, integrating the work physically, emotionally, and energetically. Slow, steady breath. Stay present to your experience. Begin to wake back up from Shavasana, moving a little bit, maybe taking a great big stretch. And you can roll to one side, come up to take a seat. Keep your eyes closed, staying focused. Hands at the heart. Saying a little silent prayer to yourself. Bowing forward, namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this yin yoga practice with me. Please do subscribe to my channel so that you can be alerted of all the new content I put out every week. It's just a wonderful way to support free yoga on the internet. Thank you again. Namaste.